This radius to be 3,959 miles. 3959 miles. And it says plus or minus. One mile. <laughs> what effect would the tolerance of plus or minus 0 0.1 mile or oh, 0.1 mile have on our estimate of the Earth's surface area? All right. So if we have the surface area of the sphere is pi four pi r squared. Thank you. So we can go d s d r equals eight pi r. So your change in the surface area is, we can actually multiply both sides by dr. Think of it that way. And the dr represents the change in radius. The ds stands for the change in surface area. Okay, so our change in surface area would be 8 pi, our radius would be 3,959. And our tolerance or error would be 0.1, and that will give you the change in the surface. Yeah. So what if you had a function where like adding minus one was different than minusing plus one? Like you know what I mean? Yeah. So the error. That's why we would usually do absolute value. It doesn't matter if the error is positive or negative. Okay. The error would be. Doesn't affect us. No. Uh -huh. Yeah. So. If I made that negative 0.1, then it would just be the same answer, it would just be negative. But that's right. Mm -hmm. So then the book tells us that it is 9,950 miles away. Should we trust the book? Uh, yeah. I don't want to do that. <laughs> okay, so this is an estimate. The DS is an estimate, the DR is an estimate. The literal would be delta over delta. But in calculus, we say that is an approximation of ds dr. Okay, so the, these are called differentials. A dr is a differential, ds is a differential. It's just the change in s, the change in r. Okay, we can do that, right? Find the derivative, plug in what we know. Pretty easy. It gets a little more difficult in example 11, determining the tolerance about how accurately should we measure the radius of a sphere to calculate the surface area within 1% of its true value. All right, so the, the surface area has to be within 1% of its true value. So we start with, um, first of all, I would not follow uh, the way the book does this problem. I would say our change in surface area has to be within 1% of the actual surface area. I don't think the book does that anywhere, but that's the most important part of the whole problem. Okay, if you get here, the rest is kind of a process, but this is something that we have to figure out. So the error in the, or the change in surface area, the tolerance of surface area, has to be within 1% of the actual surface area. Does that make sense looking at it anyway? Okay, so now we'll do the process. DS. We'd be given this same equation. We would do the derivative and solve for ds. We already did it. So it's absolute value of 8 pi r dr. And our s is 4 pi r squared. So all I did was substitute in the ds and the s from the problem. Okay? Now we want to solve for dr. So I'm going to divide by 8 pi r. Divide by 8 pi r. So I get, all right, so the pi's cross off and r cross off. 4 over 8 is 1 half. So you see that it's 1 half over 100 r? That's a weird area. Right. But it asks you, yeah, so 1 over 200, that's the same thing. But what is the question? Um. How accurately should we measure it? So that's why we write it within, as a as 100 on the bottom, so it has to be within 0.5. one half 
percent will be your answer. Can you redo that entire thing? That made zero sense. Yeah, I'll get. I'll do a different one like that. Okay, so it says how accurately do we have to measure and our radius or change in radius, so the error of the radius has to be within one half of a percent. And if it's within one half of a percent, then we know that the surface area's error is going to be within one percent. All right, so let's do, um, we'll do volume. So do problem 44. What is 40, what is it asking you? Um, it's, uh, the volume is to be calculated with an error of no more than 1% of the true value. Of a sphere? Of a right circular cylinder. What? What? Do you, the height and radius of a right circular cylinder are equal, so the cylinder's volume is B equals high height. Oh, right, I'm not going to Okay, sorry. Um, but we'll say volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed, and I want to know um, how accurately uh, do we have to measure the radius or the volume to be within, we'll say, 10%. <laughs> That's how I write it. All right, so we're given our formula. But this first step is the most important. So see if you can figure out what we're going to write there. For dv has to be within 2% of the actual volume. Anybody have that? Okay, good. We're getting there. Wait, why would you put v there and not r? Because you're finding volume. Okay. All right. So, why don't you try this problem then? Two thirds of a percent. Mm -hmm. So the fours cross off, pies cross off. One of the hours yeah, stays right. have have two three. over three. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you just over hundred, so two thirds of a percent. So then it's three over fifty, which is the same as two thirds over a hundred, which is what it is. Does that make sense? You just, that's like, not all that easy. That's this is right, right? right? You're trying to figure out the percent with all that. Start simplifying. Oh, right. <clears throat> Okay, so the first thing you were supposed to do was find that. You should have 100 on the bottom. Yep. Because then you put that percentage. into where B is. Your DV and your B, yeah. Okay, I failed to find Well, it's all right. So, but I just had the process. So it's, it's like right. Oh, yeah. So that could be moved down there. And then so you just have the 200. Why are you getting there? Would you say great? Does that make sense? Okay. 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 It's a proportion, right. not a Good. constant. And they're all similar shapes, right? So if it's a big sphere or a small sphere, your answer is going to be just based on the size. So it's the percentage. Will you will you ever have like will it ever will the percentage ever change by r? Like, like could you ever have um, change in dr equals um, like r squared or something like that? Because it makes sense for Will it always be linear on the right? Yeah. No. Uh, no, because the when you do it. I could ask this, but I'll just explain. So when you do a derivative, you're decreasing the degree by one, and you're gonna end up dividing by that. So you'll always have one. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's 4.5.